Hey guys, it's Milma here with another Xcode tutorial. Um, well, I wouldn't say this is such an Xcode tutorial, more of a information tutorial, if you know what I mean. Uh, because in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you kind of about the graphics of an iPhone app. And because my next tutorials in this series will be all about adding the icons, the loading screens, the backgrounds, the navbar images, the you know, table view background images, the table view cells, all awkward stuff like that. I'll be teaching you how to add graphics like that to your application. Um, so I'm, this tutorial is basically a quick information tutorial so you will understand what I'm talking about in my other tutorials in this series. Um, now all the graphics in these series are done by a guy called Jan Martin. I think that's how you say it because, yeah, Jan Martin. And his YouTube ch channel can be found here. And he also has a series of tutorials teaching you how to make the graphics that we're using in these uh, tutorials. So there you go, that's that series there, you can go check them out. Now I, you know, I did not make any of these, they were kindly made by him for these tutorials. So go check him out there um, and, you know, just go see what he's got. You can also email him and stuff and ask him to help you with graphics and stuff like that. So yeah, go check that out. Also, all the graphics used in these tutorials... Uh, Jan said I could kindly display on my uh, website for you to go for you guys to go download and get so you can use in your applications as well if you wanted to test. So there you go. Now, like I said, this is going to be me teaching you kind of about what the screen and stuff like that. So with the iPod screen, you have two different types of screen now. You have the iPod 3 or iPhone 3 generation, third generation screen, which is the normal. 320 by 480 pixels which is this size here that's the size again this is just a graphic again made by Jan uh, so yeah or Jan I'm, I'm not sure sorry if I say that wrong I am really sorry um, so yeah like that and that is the normal 320 by 480 pixels now if you were designing without the status bar this would be the size however if you do have a status bar then you need to crop 20 pixels off the top of the screen like so that's 20 pixels off the top of the screen and that will uh, then be a la that will be the size of your screen with the status bar there like that um, so yeah and also we have a second screen which is called the retina screen and that is for iPhone 4s, the new iPhone 4S, which has just been released, well, shown, which everyone's excited about, and um, obviously iPod Touches and stuff like that. So that is going to be always double the size of the normal images. So here we have a retina size image. Now this is nine, uh, sorry, 640 by 940 pixels. Again, you would cut 40 pixels off the top, of this if you wanted to code with the status bar so crop 40 pixels off the top there I did did, did 41 by accident um, yep so <laughs> there you go that's a retina image um, now remember if you're designing every retina image is always double the size so if you had a button that is a hundred by a hundred on retina size then it's going to be 50 by 50 on non retina size so always design with the retina first because that will be your biggest resolution so you want it to look very nice when it's so it's not pixelated so let's say this is our button here our button is 200 by 200 pixels on retina so when we shrink it down it will be 100 by 100 pixels uh, like that now one thing other thing you'll notice about these graphics is that one they obviously look exactly the same and their name is exactly the same apart from the retina image has at 2x on the end so this one is just default.png over here which is the retina one we have default at sign 2x.png it's the same name but with this at 2x extension that signifies to Xcode that this is a retina image you don't need to code anything in Xcode to let it know that it will automatically swap between the two. You don't have to do anything. You just need to make sure both of these are included in your project. And when you're declaring an image, so say if you wanted to set your image, you would always use the low resolution version 
and Xcode will automatically change it to the Retina version if you have one. Um, so there you go, that's just my little kind of jargon tutorial on my, you know, my um, my graphics skills. I can't make graphics very well, but that's just so you know what I'm going to be talking about in my other tutorials in this series, why you have the Retina versions, what the Retina versions are, double the size always. Um, now, Jan has also explained this in his tutorials, and I think he does it a lot better than I have just done. So if you want to go watch his first tutorial in making the graphics, he will explain everything straight away, first slide. So go watch that, you'll you'll understand it, I think, a lot clearer. But all you need to know is retina size is always double the size of the normal one, and it has at 2x on the end, so simple as that. So again, thanks for watching this quick little information tutorial. Again, all the graphics aren't made by me, they're made by Jan. His YouTube tutorial can be found there. My next tutorial on adding uh, a splash screen or loading screen and an icon to your app can be found here. So go check that out when it's out. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at FailCakeApps. A little annotation to pop up the screen there. Uh, don't forget to click on the adverts in some of my videos because, you know, that always helps, takes a second and, uh, you know, helps out a lot. So again, thanks for watching guys, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe, and see you in my next tutorial.